Hello and welcome back to another episode of my MotoGP 23 career mode and today we're here for the sixth round of our full Moto3 season for the Italian Grand Prix at Mugello. Now if you didn't see the last episode I do recommend you go check that one out before you do get into this one so nothing is spoilt for you but it was a really good battle at the French Grand Prix. We showed great pace in the dry then the race turned out to be wet. I tried a bit of an experiment, turned the AI difficulty down in the wet to make it so it's a bit more balanced. And we actually had a really, really good battle at the front with Holgado and Marrera. So I think in the future, when there's going to be wet weather, I'm definitely going to turn it down by 10%. Now heading into this Italian Grand Prix, I have done a little bit of testing and the leaders were about two seconds quicker than me when I was in the pack. So obviously that's going to cost me a lot of time now. If I'm on my own, it's probably a bit more relative. But I do think we might just turn it down a few percent just to make it a bit more balanced because it is a corner speed track, which obviously the AI have a huge advantage with because they can actually turn in and get on the power. You can also see heading into this weekend, we have the extra challenge to beat Messiah in the race. Now, of course, we need to stay ahead of him in the championship anyway. But we've got an extra challenge to actually beat him on track. So that's got to be the goal today. So without any further ado, we'll head into the Italian Grand Prix weekend and I'll see you after free practice. So at the end of free practice, then you can see we've ended up in seventh place, six tenths off of Diogo Moreira. So I think we've about hit that right with the difficulty by the looks of it. The simulated times also don't seem to be particularly an issue at this circuit, although I did do the skip to qualifying thing. And I think that did fix it before. So maybe that is just the way to get proper simulated times, because to be fair, I've got no problem being six tenths off. That's probably about right with me not being that great at this circuit and obviously the AI having their inbuilt advantage. So I'm hoping that that will get us through to Q2. So we may as well head into qualifying now and find out. So we're here in Q2 then. So it does seem like we've not been knocked out by the simulated times in the other sessions. But you can see coming through Q1, then we've got David Munoz, Mario Aji, Colin Vaya, and Kaito Toba. Colin Vaya has been uh, doing not too bad actually in this career mode season. And to be fair, he kind of backed it up in real life at Saxon Ring. Right up there on was it fourth place of the grid. He had a really, really good start. It was a shame the way the race ended for him. But either way, back to MotoGP career mode here. We're going to go onto the medium tyre on the front, soft on the rear, our usual qualifying tyre. Now, before we actually do head out, I may as well show you the weekend management. And for the race, it looks like it's going to be cloudy and then potentially rain. So the race could be quite an interesting one. It could be completely turned on its head regardless of what we do in qualifying here. But I'm going to still try my very best to try and qualify as high up on the grid as I can. Obviously, with it being cloudy here as well, the times might be a bit slower than in the previous session because there's not going to be as much grip. Although by the same token, the soft rear tyre was overheating, so potentially it will uh, be a little bit cooler. So actually maybe we can go even quicker. It, it does depend. Most of the time I think you are sorry, in the cloudy conditions, but under certain circumstances you can certainly go quicker because you can use a less optimal tyre. We do seem to have solid top 10 pace if we do do a decent lap time, which would be pretty nice to be honest. Really, all of our lap time loss comes through sort of the Arabiatas and also through some of those corners like Borga San Lorenzo and Poggio Seco and stuff. It's just on the exit, trying to get the bike actually to turn and then accelerate. The AI has such an advantage. They're actually not that good through Casanova and Savelli, surprisingly, from what I've seen. I can actually sort of gain on them through Casanova because I can break quite late and I can sort of carry that through to Savelli. But Arabiata 1 and 2, we definitely lose a lot of time. Although, to be fair, I'm riding pretty badly on this outlap. Trust me, I've been riding better through this section against AI. It's not the fact that I'm just riding really badly. It's just because they could turn so much tighter. Let's see. Can we do a good qualifying lap here at Mugello? It's going to be pretty tough. We've not got a tow or anything either, but then that's probably for the best because they're probably getting our way on the brakes. So all towards the line then. What are we going to do? Joel Kelso currently on top with a 2 minute 1.2. We do a 59.8. So our fastest lap of the weekend. 1.3 seconds clear of Joel Kelso there then. I do think the AI are going to improve their lap times because they were of course quicker in practice. I don't know how fast they were though. I don't know whether 59.8 is the top time of the weekend or whether that's probably around about what Marrera was doing in the practice sessions. But either way, it looks like we've got some decent pace here. If they don't get too close to my lap time, I will put the difficulty up for the race. But just based on the test that I did, they seemed a lot quicker than me. But when I'm in clear air, I could do much quicker lap times. But when we actually get to the race, I think you'll find that my lap times will drop a lot because I'll have AI attacking me constantly through some of the sections where I'm a bit slower. So at the end of the session then, Diogo Moreira takes pole position, Danny Holgado in second place, and myself rounding out the front row in third position. So those two do have a bit of a step over the rest of the field, but with everybody else 
it is pretty close. So this could be a bit of a tasty race because, like I said, they are going to be really aggressive with me, especially through some of the high speed corners. They are going to cost me a lot of lap time. So I think maybe we will leave the difficulty as it is on 95%. I've been using 100 at most of the races, but here they did seem a little bit too fast through some of the high speed stuff. And it does seem to be about right because I am still about half a second off pole position. It's just the rest of the AI are struggling a little bit like myself. So without any further ado then, let's head into the race. This could be an exciting one because it is scheduled to rain. So with the potential of rain, it does change my race plan very slightly. Now, I think the recommended tyre is going to be the medium and the hard tyre. Obviously, I'm going to use the medium on the front. I'm going to use that regardless of the condition, to be quite honest. But it is recommending the hard tyre. But if it does rain, the race may be stopped before the end, or we may have to do a quick restart procedure or something like that. So the soft tyre might go long enough into the race. And to be honest, the hard tyre doesn't feel that good. It was a bit like how it was in Portimao. The pace wasn't quite there. I was going to struggle on the opening laps, and I felt like maybe I'd get shuffled backwards a little bit. So I'm going to go with the soft rear and risk it and hope that that rain does come in time for it to save our tire wear because if not our tire probably will go off the cliff but without any further ado then let's get this race started i'm really looking forward to this one because it could be pretty interesting the start of the italian grand prix here at Mugello, just a few moments away now very soon we'll see the riders powering down to the san donato corner so we've got Marrera on pole position, then Holgado alongside myself, rounding out the front row. The lights are on here then for the Italian Grand Prix. Held for an eternity once again, but lights out and away we go for the Italian GP here at Mugello. Our start's not been too bad. The AI doing a bit of weaving there. Yamanaka comes past. Is Yamanaka having one hell of a weekend, by the way, being up towards the sharp end. Artigas has got passes as well, but can we try and re-attack into turn one? We've got the inside of everybody into turn one. We've dived up the inside. We've got that advantage on the brakes. Marrera comes back up the inside, so we're up into second position. Holgado trying to attack us around the outside as well as we go into Luco. But I think we have managed to defend from him, so we're up to second position. We've made a position off the start, which is fantastic when we're up this high already. But Holgado is trying to get us here. He's pushing us out a little bit, using a little bit of power by three to try and level him. Artigas goes straight into the back of Holgado. Holgado just sweeping across our nose, nose though. I was trying to get the inside of him. He just completely swept across me. Fair play. Really brave from Danny Holgado there. And now I've got Artigas at the inside as we went on the curb a little bit there. We're back in front of Artigas. Back up into third place. And now I'm going to try and hunt down Holgado and Marrera again. But this is the section where the AI are a lot faster than me. And well, to be fair, I've made a big mistake there. I tried to carry way too much speed in there. Clip the curb. And that's what's cost me the position to Artigas there, in fairness. So I made a bit of a mistake myself. Now, this is what I was talking about. You get people like Suzaki pushing me off. And I get a trial this warning for that as well. Which obviously affects my race, affects my confidence. Suzaki then just rides on the curb, runs wide completely. So what a pointless manoeuvre it was. Because he not only ruined me a little bit, he then ruined his own race at the next corner. Because, look, he's all the way down his seventh now. But here we go, around the outside of Artigas. Through Pelagio. Oh, sorry, Corotaya. Pelagio is the one before. And... I've actually cleanly done that. I was expecting it to come back up the inside. Bit of a shock. But there we go then. Back up into P3. Holgado still battling with Marrero in front. But if we're not careful, those two are going to start to ride away from the pack again. And Artigas still attacking us down towards the last corner. But we have just managed to about defend from him there. But we're going to be a little bit wide here. We're going to have to be delayed on picking up the throttle. And we've already got a straight line speed disadvantage anyway. So uh, Artigas will probably come flying past us. Holgado goes to the lead past Marrera. They're weaving across each other a little bit. Here comes Artigas flying past me like I'm standing still. Try and duck back into Xavi's slipstream. If we can use a little bit of it. Try and pass him before we actually get to the braking zone. Which I think we're going to. Actually not quite because we hit the rev limiter. But then we're going to try and use the braking zone to our best ability to close up a little bit there. I had to break a little bit early because it seemed like the two in front were doing something a little bit weird. Didn't want to hit them. But we still can't shake Artigas. He's still trying to attack us as we go through Luco once again. Again, we're under threat. Holgado actually goes a bit wide. Marrera comes back on the inside. So Marrera sits him up a little bit there. Holgado made a big mistake. So back down to second place. So a bit of a scrap going on with these leaders. And it's stopping them from quite pulling away from us. So I had to turn the fuel down very slightly. Because it did say that we were running out. I guess this is one of those power circuits. Which is a shame. Because really we need the fuel at a track like this. But so far, we've actually managed to keep in front of Artigas through Arabiata 1. He pushes out the way through Arabiata 2. Messia tries to capitalise, of course. We need to make sure that we're ahead of Messia, even if we're not ahead of anybody else. So we're going around the outside again of Artigas. So weak on the brakes. Back around the outside of the, the Spaniard, up into P3 once again. So Holgado still trying to get his way past Marrera. But what an exciting race this has been so far. So many battles already, and it's still only lap 2. So on to the front straight, then trying to get a slipstream off of Marrera. Holgado once again 
takes the lead ahead of Diogo. We're still in front of Artigas so far. We did the fastest lap very briefly, but Messia beats it with a 2 minute point six. But can we try and pass these two down towards turn one? Late on the brakes. Well, actually, we're probably a bit early to be honest. If I break later, we'd have been in a better position. I wouldn't have been so tight towards the corner, but we have overtaken both of them. Holgado also overtakes Barrera at the same time. So we take the lead of the Italian GP here. Holgado tries to go around the outside, and that was the first drop of rain. I've just seen a drop of rain on the left hand side there. So I think there is some rain starting to come down on the circuit. Although, yep, yeah, I can see some more now. I was about to say I didn't see any more, but I can now. So it does seem like it definitely is going to be a quick restart procedure, which is going to be a nightmare for us. Holgado passes us on the curb in the rain. How how brave is that from Daniel Holgado? It's going to be really, really difficult for us to get back past him. I had a look around the outside through Casanova, but he's too fast. He made a bit of a mistake through Casanova, though. We're around the outside through Savelli. Unbelievable stuff here. There's rain on my actual camera now. I can see there's raindrops on the camera. So we've got to be careful. We've got to stay away from the white lines. We can so easily go down in conditions like this. We may as well keep burning the fuel whilst we're at it as well. Oh, Holgado pushes them out of the way through Arabiata 2. And Messia, all of a sudden, is now getting around the outside of us. And we're back up the inside of Messia into the Scarperia corner. Messia, though, is really on a mission because he's come from a decent way back. He didn't qualify too well. So he's got the sort of Ortola Portoval vibes about him. Speaking of Ortola, he's up to sixth as well. Again, I think he struggled a bit. There's so much spray coming off of Daniel Holgado's tyres. Now, I thought he was going to go down there. I thought his front end went a little bit. And now we've got Jamal Messia up the inside. Messia overtakes us through Corotaya. So for once an AI actually does that corner pretty well. And can we try and get the exit out of Biondetti? Try and get back past Jamal Messia towards... Buccini. Not that it particularly matters because, of course, it does seem like this race is going to get stopped. But I'd rather be second on the grid than third once we start the new race. So up into P2 now. They're up the inside of Messia. But to be honest, the grip is still really good so far. So I'm actually not too bothered if the race goes on a little bit longer. But Messia rides into the side of us trying to use the stream off of Holgado. to try and neutralize Messia because the AI has such an advantage. Artigas almost going on the grass. You don't want to be doing that when it started to rain. To be honest, I'm surprised the race hasn't been stopped yet with the amount of rain. There's so much spray coming off of Daniel Holgado. As we go down towards turn one, up the inside once again of Holgado. And once again, probably breaked a bit too early because I was basing myself on the AI. But we've taken the lead back at turn one. It just seems like that's pretty much our advantage over the AI. Everywhere else, they seem to be a bit quicker. Just on the brakes, those are the only places we could do it really. Into turn one, into sort of Scarperia, into Corantio as well. But again, I'm still surprised that this race is still going on because look at how much rain. This is really, really wet. Although I suppose the tarmac itself maybe doesn't feel too ungrippy. It feels like there is a decent amount of grip here. And Holgado again is pushing me out of the way. He's been super aggressive. It's Daniel Holgado with us. I mean, we're not really a championship threat to him particularly. I, mean, I suppose we're about 30 odd, uh, 30 odd points behind him. But even still, considering the conditions, he's really, really going for it. Here comes Messia again on the inside. It's Arabiata 2 and Artigas as well. And Ortola's now getting involved. This is where we get shuffled back. And then this is where the red... Of course! I was literally about to say this is where the red flag comes out. When we literally get shuffled down to fifth. So we've lost three positions on the grid. Just like that. But to be quite honest, it doesn't look any more wet than it just did then. And there was plenty of grip on the dry tyres. Which really is a surprise. But here we are then. I think we've got probably about six laps to go in this race. But I'm really glad I did make that tyre gamble. Because it was the right decision. Definitely going on the soft tyre. Because there was plenty plenty of grip actually left. I think it would have done the full distance actually. In fairness. But the rain came down in plenty of time. So we've not made a mistake. We're actually P3 here. Which is interesting. I suppose the grid is based on the last sector point maybe. So I went through in third place. Maybe just as sort of Messier had gone past me. It should be over the line. But I'm pretty sure we were second over the line. So it does seem a little bit bizarre either way. I don't really see a way that we're third place. If we were second, I'd be like, fair enough, it's over the line. I don't think we went through a sector point in third. But either way then, let's get this second half of the race started. It's going to be tough for us. Because it is wet. It does seem like it is Messier in front of us. So yeah, it must have literally been we went through a sector point in third place. I didn't actually realise we did. But Messier must have literally have passed us right on the start of a sector. A start of the Italian Grand Prix here at Mugello. Just a few moments away now. And very soon we'll see the riders powering down to the San Donato corner. So we're going to have to really try to fight with the AI here. But it's going to be difficult because, again, they have the advantage in the rain. But the lights are on. They're waiting for them to go out here for the second time at Mugello. Lights out and away we go. And we've had a decent-ish start. My guy was doing something a bit weird with his leg off the line. But we actually have had a better start than we did in the dry, to be honest. Artigas is still blasting in there. Then. We're going to get stuck on the outside, unfortunately. As we go down towards turn one, we're going to try and go around the outside. Up into the lead of the race once again. Fair, the rain so far isn't too bad. 
We've actually got seven laps to go, so yeah, we've actually got a lot of the race to go. This is basically like a full length race, really. Because we only probably did a few laps, I suppose, before the red flag came out for the rain. So I think it's going to be a tough one for us. Obviously, we do have the AI slightly lower at the circuit, but generally speaking, I need to turn them down a lot for the wet conditions. So we are probably pretty vulnerable, although so far, it's not actually that wet, so the grip is actually still relatively good. The bike isn't sliding all the way through the corner, which obviously is our main disadvantage in the wet. So RT Gas trying to go around the outside. And now he goes up the inside, so it's fair play to RT Gas. Don't he's got this turn of pace from all of a sudden. Now Masia and Holgado up the inside through Abiata 2. This is what I was talking about earlier on. I mean, I suppose you saw it in the first few laps, but that's where they kept sort of bashing me out of the way and why I felt I needed the difficulty a bit lower because i just get shuffled back through the pack because there'd be like five of them doing it at a time. My front tyre is red. It's absolutely overheated. I think it's probably still a bit too dry, to be quite honest, to be starting this race yet. They should have waited for a bit more rain to come down. But even still, we've hit Oh God, up the bat now through Corrid Tyre. We're back down into P5. Marrera trying to get the inside. So it's all of the top flight AI, really, that we're battling with at the front here. So Zaki's right there as well. So this is where we start to get shuffled back through the pack now that it's wet. Here comes Sasaki, and also I can see, is that Assman behind us? Oh, whoa, whoa! That was unbelievable. Sasaki sort of forces on the curve, and the front end went because it's so overheated, but it somehow saved itself. We got really lucky with that one, trying to push Sasaki, or use Sasaki as a bit of a burn, because I have a bit of an advantage. You give him a bit of his own medicine, put him on the curb. But we really need to try and catch these guys in front. Sasaki obviously doesn't want us to do that, because he's trying to re-overtake us. The track has got substantially more wet since we were here on the last lap, fair enough. We've got down towards the first corner, the inside into P3, but that's not stopping, is it? Not a chance, as long as we get past Messiah, that's all that really counts, which we haven't managed to do. But back on the power, can we try and beat him two turn two? We're going to try, we contact with Ortola. Oh, that's not what you want, we're going to be getting some messages, I'm sure, about that on the social feed at the end of the episode. But Suzaki is the one that's taken advantage of that, and all of a sudden we've just dropped backwards. Our front tyre is overheating so much. Again, the track is just too dry for our medium wet front tyre here. And the way that I ride the bike, I overheat the front tyre as it is anyway. Not the inside again of Ortola. I'm not trying to hit into him here. That was a complete accident. I didn't even want to go to the inside of him, to be quite honest. But this time we got to the inside of Messia into Casanova. That was deliberate. We didn't touch him, though, of course. It was a clean overtake. And now we're in front of Messia because, again, that's the rider that we do need to focus on beating. I'm trying to watch the fuel as well because I don't know, again, actually how much I have. Because, of course, with it being a stopped race, the fuel gets a bit confused with a uh, minus three laps in reserve. Obviously, we're not three laps under fuel, otherwise there's no chance of finishing the end of the race. But I'll tell you what, Asman coming to the inside there, the wet conditions, Damok, the Malaysian, really coming into his own, which, yeah, I suppose these really would be the Malaysian conditions, the hot weather, the, the wet weather as well. But I'll tell you what, we were looking down there, we had a massive high side. Might need to turn my traction control up a little bit. But I'll tell you what, we've just lost a load of time for that. We're trying to go around the outside of Filippo Farioli now. But you can tell this does reek of desperation, some of these things that I'm doing on this lap. We're down into 10th place now. What looked like a potential, potentially a race win on the cards, if we're being completely honest. We were battling for the win in the dry. Looks like we're going to probably struggle to even get in the points here, potentially, as this race goes on. But can we try and pass David Munoz into the last corner? Yes, we can. We're close up to very early as well, so I'm going to have no choice but to go the inside of him too. Messiah, though, be shuffled back as well. Ortola goes underneath Messiah, so Messiah was coming through in the dry, but he seems to be dropping back in the wet too, which I guess is okay because Messiah is our target. But using Farioli here, then as a bit of slipstream, can we try and get past him and Messiah? Messiah just seems slow on the straight, so I don't know whether we've given Messiah damage or something with a little bit of contact, although I don't think we ever hit Messiah. But at the inside now we go of a couple of riders into turn one, at the inside of Ortola. Asman now being shoved out the way by Suzaki in front. Can we try and capitalise on that one? Not quite, because to be fair, Sasaki did that in a pretty good manner. Our tyre is starting to cool down a little bit on the front now, but it is, like, it's half gone already, and we've literally done two laps on it. It's absolutely unbelievable. We are going to probably end up going down in this race, because the front tyre is going to be completely gone. And I know you guys are probably thinking that I need to just back off then, but I'm literally just trying to ride around the track. I can't really do anything else. And now, we're being pushed by Ortona. I mean, I suppose it's a bit of payback for what we did to him previously, although, again, it was unintentional. Bit of contact with Farioli, so... This one has been an aggressive race, but to be fair, I'm just hanging on to any positions I can get and up the inside into Savelli on Ivan Ortola. Trying to show the former championship leader who is boss. He's back up the inside of us again, not giving any quarter from either side here. And now Masia all of a sudden is back in it again with it instead of it being Farioli, or the Farioli just bugged the pair of us off there. But I tell you what, it is so difficult trying to battle the AI when they can ride through you like this. This is why I didn't want to get stuck in the pack, you see, initially. I was trying to stay. That's why I kept trying to take the lead back 
in the uh, the first part of the race because I know if I got stuck in the pack, this would be what would happen. I know it's not really the wet conditions causing this. Oh, we've hit Messiah up the back through Corridor. We need to be careful because that's a couple of times we've hit someone on the back through there now. And I think we really are going to get some riders being a bit annoyed at us, especially probably Messiah since he's already our rival. How we stayed on there. We're going to have to take the shot limits warning for that one, but oh, we were lucky to stay on. And that's it. I think that's any chance of us beating Jalen Messiah in this race completely gone now. So we've got the inside of Stefano and Nepa. We're down into 11th place, and there's still four entire laps to go. Ricardo Rossi, our old rival, coming to the inside here as well. We're battling really with all of our rivals. Ricardo Rossi puts us on the curb. We've got Yamanaka behind us as well, and Suzuki. These are all people that we've been tasked to beat in different rounds here of this crib so far. We've definitely lost way too much time to Messiah now. We're seven tenths behind him. We try to pass a few going down towards turn one. Although Messiah is right there, to be fair. And can we try to get the inside of Rueda? We can indeed. In fact, we're actually going to be halfway up the inside of Messiah. So somehow we're going to do it. Going to really just force it on the throttle. Side by side with Jal Messiah. Messiah is just dropping back like we are. It's really, really helping us out, to be quite honest. We're getting quite lucky with that. And now all of a sudden we've got Nepa back up the inside and Rueda as well. We're having so much contact, so much rubbing his race in here. And it's so dangerous to have this much contact in the rain, to be honest. But Messia definitely has an issue because he's dropping back. We're up the inside of Messia now. Oh, sliding across the front of him again. He's back up the inside of us. We're being hit by Nepa again. It's so difficult to hit my racing lines when I'm being hit so much by the AI. And we're now trying to go back around the outside through Casanova. That's just not going to happen. He stopped it on the apex of Casanova. We should be able to hang it around the outside through Savelli. We don't really have that front grip that we had previously earlier on the race. So that would have been possible in the dry. But just with the front tyre going the way it is, we are starting to struggle. Ricardo Rossi caught it the inside through Arabiata 1. Hopefully, we can try and stop anybody coming at the inside of Arabiata 2. Well, we've not done that because Suzuki has now overtaken us as well. And we've got Rueda still trying to get past us, throwing our arms up in frustration. I think we are probably going to annoy a lot of riders in this one. Although, to be fair... It's not like I've been hitting them a lot. They've been hitting me a lot as well. So, Messiah is really dropping back through the pack now. You can see he's down to 11th place. So, it is, it is working out for us. He's sort of going backwards with us. But for our championship, this is really not ideal. We've got Rueda trying to get past us now. But again, we're going to have to risk everything into turn one just to try and close up onto this group. And there's a big pack of them. So, we could easily have contact. We're on the inside of one of the layer parts of Suzuki. We're on the inside of the other of Messiah as well. Can we try and get him? We're on the curb. It's pretty much a carbon copy of what happened on the, the previous lap. So we're just staying basically close enough to Messiah to dive bomb him into turn one. And I'm cheesing this a little bit. I do feel a bit bad about that. But there's only so much I can do because the front tyre is completely gone. Like the FIM have made a huge mistake starting this race so early because my front tyre was completely destroyed basically after a lap because it was still dry on the racing line. Here we go, around the outside of Rueda, through Casanova, up the inside to Savelli. Messia being pushed out at Savelli as well. So here is Messia, but as we go into my worst corner on the circuit, Arabiata, we're going to just try and close up to him. Wow, you can tell Messia's struggling because even I closed up on him into Arabiata. So I think maybe I just need to try and go defensive into this corner. And yeah, we sort of let Rueda push us through there. I think that's the way to do it. We should be able to pass Messia down into Scarperia now, out the inside we go. Yes, we have, although he's pinching me to the inside. That's the problem when you try to pass the AI. They just sort of pinch you onto the inside because they're just turning on you like you're not there. And we see it hangs it by around the outside. Rueda still in here. So we're battling with some top flight teams here. Leopard and Io for 12th place, which is a really weird thing to be battling for with them. The front right of my tyre is completely gone. I mean, I've just run so wide through Corrin tyre. But Messia has absolutely no quarter speed. You can see Rueda's been held up by him so, so much. We've got Toba and Yamanaka trying to pass us now as well. Toba actually has passed us. So that's demoted us to 15th. We should be able to get him into the last corner. We're getting Rueda as well at the inside by the looks of it. Well, we've just forced Rueda out of the way. Sorry, Jose. But we should easily get Messia here now. And this could be an opportunity because there's a bit of a gap in front. So we might actually be able to break properly into someone. Yeah, Messia's slow on the straights. Messia's got some sort of bike problem by the looks of it. I don't even know there was... Yeah, he's put his... I'm sure he put his hand up there. I don't know. There is bike problems to this game. I wasn't aware that there was, but... It seems like he's really dropping back. He puts his hand up. I don't know whether maybe there was a bit of contact. That might have been really what's happening. But it really did look like he's putting his hand up as if he was retiring from the race or something. But yeah, I just don't think, I don't think that is a mechanic in the game. But he's definitely struggling with something. His tyre maybe is just gone as well, like mine. That could be it. Maybe we have a similar riding style. We're on, we both are on Hondas, of course. Oh, no, Yamanaka, Yamanaka. What have you done, man? You've ruined us. I don't know how we've stayed on the bike there. Seems like maybe the player's got some of this inbuilt AI grippy front end because I probably should have lost the front a fair few times this weekend now. And we've got Toba just absolutely dived at these other ones. Well, I'm not having that as we go down towards Casanova, although to be honest, it doesn't look like I've got much of a say in the matter. But that's annoying for Yamanaka. That's so annoying that Yamanaka did that because we were in front of Messiah. We had the opportunity to pull away from him in a lap, but Yamanaka just decides to ram us out the way, unfortunately. We've got Kalunvea right behind us as well now. 
Now I've got David Alonso who's just overtaken us through. Arabiata 2. Can we try and get him back into Scarparia? No, no, we can't. We just have nothing left on the front right that we can't actually outbreak people into there anymore. Kelso is now trying to come, out, come around the outside. So some of the riders that we fought for decent positions so far in this championship do seem to be struggling a lot in this wet Italian GP. We've got Vea still trying to ride at the inside of us. Messia being pushed out the way by... David Alonso, so me and Messia, doesn't look like we're going to probably be scoring points because I'd imagine we'll go even further back on this next lap. We're still with Rueda, so Rueda's really slipped back through with us, and this is what we didn't need. We're down to 20th place now. We're going to be in Scott Ogden territory here, if we're not careful, we're being beat by our teammate, which we can't have at all. We've just dipped back up the inside of half the grid into the last corner, sort of shoved Messia out of the way. Now we've got Via and David Alonso right in front of us. Using power mode 3, I'm a bit scared about how much we've got left on the lap because I don't know what that brown bar even means. I don't know if the brown bar is where the fuel is or whether that's where the end of the fuel is. We're at minus 2.7 laps. I think that should be fine because we've done more than 2.7 laps when the red flag came out. But here we are down towards turn 1 then. We've overtaken a couple of riders there back up into 14th, but it's not going to last. It's just not going to last. We've got no grip on the front. Here comes Alonso again, back up the inside. So unfortunately we've been demoted back to P15, so it looks like we're probably going to be outside the points. Because I imagine that we'll get some more riders overtaking us through either Arabiata 2 or beyond Detti now that we can't turn in for the chicane properly anymore. Trying to go back around the outside of David Alonso though. Not quite been able to do that one, maybe cost ourselves a bit of time. Yeah, I think we have via as comes through now. So yeah, we are outside the points. I cannot see us scoring any points now. We've got the inside to car and tire again. We're basically stuck on the curb. It's going to ride straight on the inside of us because we've just gone so wide. Maybe, maybe we could use our run into Buccini just to try and get it. But now I've got Roeda involved, you see. This is the problem. We'll get hit out of the way through the second part of the Biondetti. Actually, no, we've not. So we might actually be able to do something here down towards the last corner. This is for one point in this World Championship after battling for the lead early on in the dry conditions. And unfortunately, I absolutely bottled it. But maybe if we get a good exit with that Palmo 3, we've still got the fuel to run to the line by the looks of it. Here we are in the slipstream on fire. Can we beat Colin to the line on the Husqvarna? It doesn't look like we're going to, but we are gaining on him quite a bit as we come up towards the line. Well, I think we just missed out there. Yeah, we did. Colin Vea did beat us over the line there. But Diogo Moreira won the race. But you'll see the most interesting thing is the fact that three riders went over the line at the same time. Moreira, Sasaki, Artigas... Three-way heat over the line for the win. Within a tenth of them was also Holgado. Now, that's a classic Mugello finish in Moto3. Ivan Ortola ended up in fifth place with the fastest lap as well. But once we got into the wet conditions, I couldn't hold a candle to the AI. That's why usually I do turn them down, obviously, by a significant percentage. As for the Riders' Championship, then we moved down to fifth place, losing a position to Xavi Artigas, although hopefully we should be able to get him back because we're only four points down. But we are now 57 points off of the championship lead, who's actually tied between Holgado and Moreira, equal on points, 12 points back to Ortona. So those three are pretty close, but we have fell quite away from that championship. Now, I don't think we're going to be able to win this one. I thought maybe if we had a really good second half of the season, we could come back before when we were still within two race wins worth, but being over two race wins worth behind of two different people, it's going to be pretty difficult to bring back, especially since the AI don't seem to crash in this game. If it's a previous World GP game, I'd be like, sure, there'll be a race where they just don't score because that's just how it is. But on this game, the AI are relentlessly consistent, to be fair to them. As for the team championship then, nothing seems to really change there. It does close up at the top with the MT Helmets team, only one point now behind the Tech 3 team. But there's not really any changes until you look further down with 658 and the Gas Gas team both moving up a spot there as well. But we'll head back to the career hub now. Then we should get a reward for beating Messia, but obviously we are going to lose some reputation for not getting in the top 15. But what do they really want me to do? I had absolutely no grip on the bike and was just struggling to even stay on the circuit. So we actually did still gain RP overall. We gained 350 because we got 900 for beating Messia in the race. But then we lost 550 for not meeting the team objective. But we've moved up to a rising star now. So I think the Rising Star will allow us to sign four different teams. I think that's just a reputation, basically. So we've gone up a level on the reputation. But you can see here we've got two messages on the social media. So let's have a little look at that. We've got Scott Ogden and Jamma Masir as well. So we'll look at Masir's first. Maybe I was wrong to underestimate Biker. It turns out they might deserve some of the following they've gained. So we can respond to that with a nice thing. I'm happy, but I know it's not over yet. Or the track is spoken. If you like, I'll leave you a bit of advantage before starting next time. Well, we will put I'm happy, but I know it's not over yet to try 
and improve the reputation with him. Our reputation with Ogden seems to have actually gone up to neutral now. I can't remember if we did that in the last episode or if that's actually just changed because we've not had any on-track incidents with him or anything. So he says, I pushed myself to the maximum, but I was unable to keep Biker behind me. I will definitely have to do better at Saxon Ring if I want to finish in front. So we could say, I haven't had an easy time, but this was the result I was hoping for for the team. Now we need to look at the future. Or I had no doubts I'd leave you behind. We've built on the work from the last few weeks. We'll carry on with it to next weekend. Well, we'll be nice to him again, just to bring up that Honda reputation. So we've improved our rep with our teammates a little bit there but there we go then a bit of a disappointing round at the italian grand prix no points picked up pretty much championship game over not that we really were a proper contender anyway but we were starting to be there sort of week in week out battling with them and potentially if things had gone our way we could have still fought for the championship but after that round unfortunately it's just it's just not meant to be it seems like we're just not going to be able to win on the decision track honda unless of course, we do get some upgrades and they really do help us in the second half of the season. Really, our target's just got to be top Honda rider in the championship and just try and make sure that we're behind the three that are obviously dominating so far with Holgado, Moreira and Ortola. But I hope you guys did enjoy that one regardless. If you are new to the channel, please do like the video and subscribe. It really does help me out and you'll be able to see plenty more MotoGP 23 content on the channel. So if you like MotoGP 23, this is definitely the place to be. But I hope you're all staying safe and I'll see you in the next video.